who have likely memorized a psalm or two or more at some time in your life. I remember learning Psalm 23 as a child, and I can still say the first part of it by memory in the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. And then I can't remember exactly how the rest goes, but I have a picture of a quiet place, a safe hillside near a gentle shepherd. And I know that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for God is with me. This Psalm that I've carried with me since childhood assures me that I can trust in God's care. Last Tuesday during CMC's preschool story time, I introduced the children who were there to a shortened version of today's Psalm, Psalm 100. And we talked about what joyful noises sound like. And we thought about sheep in God's pasture. And then we made a joyful noise together as much as you can make noise together on Zoom. But we made joyful noises with guitar, triangle, drum, sheep sounds, our own voices. The whole earth is called to make a joyful noise to God. And I especially think of this when I sit in my backyard and listen to the birds singing or calling one another. And I don't know if birds have emotions or experience joy, but their sounds help me worship the Lord with gladness. The five brief verses of Psalm 100 instruct everyone, all lands, all people, to simply give praise and gratitude to our creator. The Psalm tells us who God is and who we are in relation to God. It's a collection of imperatives or commands, shout for joy, worship or serve the Lord, come into God's presence, know that the Lord is God, enter the Lord's gates, give thanks, praise God's name. And at the center of the psalm is the proclamation to know that the Lord is God. What does it mean to know that the Lord is God? It's more than a cognitive understanding, more than simply becoming aware of who God is. Knowing God also includes coming close, coming near to God. The psalmist refers to God by the name that was revealed to Moses at the burning bush, Yahweh. And Yahweh is often translated in English as Lord. This Yahweh is the Holy One, God who is and always will be. And we're told that Yahweh the Lord is our creator and our shepherd. God made us. We didn't make God, as it is paraphrased in the message. We belong to God. We are not our own. In spite of what our culture teaches us, there is no such thing as a self-made person. When we say these words, it's a reminder for us to consider how our life is oriented. Is God the center of our awareness? How can we create practices and rituals that remind us that the Lord is God? If there's one thing I've learned during the last year, it's that worship is not limited to a particular building or church. We are called to come into God's presence wherever it may be, in the countryside, alongside sheep and shepherds, or when we enter gates into constructed space, into the city. We are to praise God wherever God's presence can be found. And it's up to us to seek to enter into God's presence to hold time and space where we can learn to know God. We are given an invitation to enter into this most intimate, intimate space with God as we're welcomed inside the gates, into the courts that bring us close. Make yourselves at home, it says in the message. What a wonderful vision this creates of our meeting with God. We're called to worship the Lord with gladness and to give thanks. The Hebrew word used for worship can mean to work or to serve, to be a servant. Now, we may think of worship as something that happens for an hour or so once a week, but worship is more than that. 
It includes our body, our mind, heart, and soul. It's part of our daily living. And when we know God and are aligned with God's ways, we will experience joy as we serve God and our neighbors. We are meant to express our praise and our joy as we serve and worship. In verse five, we're given reasons for why we sing praise to God. And it's simply this, Yahweh, God, is good. We know God is good because God's steadfast love and God's fit because of God's steadfast love and God's faithfulness. God has a never ending commitment to God's people. As one commentator put it, what makes Yahweh good is that Yahweh has been reliable for a long time and we can con thus we can continue to rely on Yahweh into the future. The hymn we sang just a little earlier, All People That on Earth Do Dwell, was a staple of congregational singing during worship at the church where I grew up. We had a huge, rich pipe organ in our church, and when the slow, plodding introduction began, we stood and we sang slowly, beginning in unison and then dividing into rich harmony. And I remember the feeling of being surrounded by the vibrations of the organ and the sounds of the adult voices singing in reverence and praise. I never set out to memorize the tune or the words. It simply became part of me. It's remarkable to me that these Psalms that were written centuries ago have remained with us in a variety of forms handed down through the generations. The original tunes are long lost, but new melodies and harmonies have been composed to surround the words and carry them and embed them in our minds and in our hearts. These words of praise to God in Psalm 100 and other Psalms have been spoken and sung in many languages and in many places throughout history. They were sung by worshipers in the temple in Jerusalem. And Jesus likely would have learned the Psalms as a young boy and would have sung them as he worshiped with his disciples. Psalms were spoken and sung by the believers in the early church, chanted in medieval monasteries, sung by early Anabaptists and other Christians, spoken and sung throughout the world in many languages and these same Psalms are being sung today. Renewed with each new generation, reminding us who God is, who God has been, and who God always will be. During days of uncertainty or loss, or during times when we feel far from God, these words remind us and reassure us that God is good. God's steadfast love is with us. God is faithful accompanying us through all circumstances and through all time. And in those times when we have no words or cannot find words for our experiences, we can draw on these words spoken and sung by others who have known the joy and wonder of God's creation, who have known the deep sorrow of pain and loss, who have known God's care and trusted in God's compassion. These words that help us give voice to our emotions are the same words that draw us close to God so that we can know God just as the saints who came before us. I recently learned about one of these saints as I was going through some books in my dad's house after his death. And I found an old Mennonite hymnal, a Mennonite hymnal that's old, not old Mennonite hymnal, but a Mennonite hymnal printed in Lancaster by John Bayer's sons in 1875. And it's titled, A Collection of Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs Suited to the Various Occasions of Public Worship and Private Devotion of the Church of Christ with an Appendix of German Hymns by a Committee of Mennonites. And those committee, the Committee of Mennonites is not named. The owner of the book was Mary Muma, and her name is handwritten on the first page 
of the book. And the date includes the date, June 29, 1877. So through a little research in a dusty genealogy on my shelf, I learned that Mary was the name of one of the sisters of my great grandfather, Amos Mumaw. And while I don't know for sure that this is that Mary Mumaw, I think there's a good chance. And if she was the owner of this hymnal, she would have been 12 years old when her name was written inside this book's cover. Mary was born on January 22, 1865, just a few months before the end of the Civil War. Not much is known about her, but she likely lived in Elkhart County in Indiana because that's where she's buried. It's known that Mary was an invalid for four years and in 1893, as a young adult, she'd gone to a hospital in Ohio for the removal of a tumor and her sister Rachel went with her but had returned home since Mary's condition was fair. One evening as Mary was dictating a letter to the nurse to send to her sister, Mary died unexpected, unexpectedly. She was 28 years old. I imagine Mary singing from this hymnal as she endured struggles and challenges, paging through this book of ancient hymns filled with words drawn from the Psalms. Perhaps she sang hymn number 30 in this book, which indicates it is to be sung to the old hundredth tune. And perhaps she drew strength and encouragement and felt the same sense of joy and praise from the words of the verses that I do. So here it is sung again with the verses found here. John Lamont, professor, uh, professor of Old Testament at Candler School of, of Theology, says this about Psalm 100. Whenever we sing this psalm, and I would add any of the psalms, we join a vast community of praise throughout the course of history. As we bear witness to God's goodness, we step into a procession that stretches across time and place. We celebrate God's enduring commitment to the redemption of the world and reaffirm our common identity as God's people. Our loud shouts of praise announce the coming of God's reign. And I invite all of us to join that procession during these next few weeks by spending time reading, reciting, and singing the Psalms, and also by participating in learning Psalm 100 with others in the congregation. During the children's times in June, we will become familiar with Psalm 100. And if you aren't currently a child, that's okay. You can also join in this endeavor. Perhaps you can read Psalm 100 every morning or evening together as a family. You might try to memorize it using the version you like best or maybe read it in a different version each week. You might wanna make up a tune to go with the words or create illustrations make up hand motions or a dance, or maybe even a kid's bop dance to go with the words. Over the next four weeks, you will likely learn at least some snippets of or lines of the Psalm, or maybe you'll learn the whole thing by heart. Together we join the community of praise as we keep these words alive and continue the practice of reciting and singing these heartfelt Psalms offered to God passing them on from generation to generation. So once again, listen to these ancient words, this time from the inclusive liturgical Psalter, 
um, from the Anglican Church. Psalm 100, Jubilate Deo. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into the divine presence with a song. Know this, the Lord, the Lord is God, the one who made us and to whom we belong. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. Go into these courts with praise. Give thanks to God and call upon the name of the Lord. For the Lord is good, whose steadfast love is everlasting and whose faithfulness endures from age to age. <laughs> 